comfortable here. We're going to have to open the public hearing on the Rundle Seasonal Cottages Municipal Development yeah. Tax Increment Financing District. Yeah. Um, okay. Can't hear me. Uh, so we're going to have a public hearing. This is an opportunity for you who are here to ask questions uh, about uh, what's being proposed here. It will be later voted on at town meetings, Article 3. Uh, town warrant. Uh, we have representatives of the developer here to assist in responding to your questions. Uh, Mr. Fellini, I think, is in the back. He's the developer. He's assisted by Mr. Light, who is here. Mr. Mises as well. And we have counsel here as well, uh, Mr. Saucer, to assist uh, in any questions you might have. Um, Having said that, we'll ask you if you do have uh, a question or want to make a comment, please raise your hand, um, identify yourself for the record, and we'll move uh, forward from there. Uh, public hearings, I uh, caution people, are not an opportunity for people to debate each other. Uh, if you want to make a comment, pro or con, that's fine, but we don't want to get into people uh, having arguments. Uh, we invite you to take that outside if that's transpired. <laughs> Uh, having, having said that, uh, would it be of assistance to those of you who are here to have kind of a thumbnail, you know, cliff notes yes. kind of? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I thought it might. I'm going to ask Mr. Redway, uh, who's our town planner over here, and Todd Shea is our town manager, to uh, give you an opportunity uh, to a, a thumbnail, cliff notes sketch of what tax or tip. Is and what it does and what uh, benefit it might be. I'll start. <clears throat> My name is Todd Shea, town manager. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, if you're not familiar with this plan, um, the property is located on Route 1 where what was formerly known as Southern Main Landscaping. Uh, if you were to leave the campground road, let's say you're on the campground road and you take a left onto Route 1, it's about three quarters of a mile on the left hand side where the entrance to that property will be. What is being proposed is a tax increment financing district and development plan. Um, and what that does is it gives, it's one of the only mechanisms that a municipality has to give some incentive to a developer to, to bring their development to the town. Um, the town of Arundel has, or uh, Mr. Polini has approximately 196 acres, give or take. And uh, what he's proposing is to develop a 259 unit uh, seasonal cottage uh, development. And what that is is the residents would be temporary residents. Uh, that would be the, the um, nature of their residency. Uh, it would not be year-round residents. The children will not be going into the school system. Um, and there would be a managing partner or a manager who lives on that property to take care of it. I believe year-round, could you verify that, Joe? Sure. Who will take care of the security and the safety of the property while the residents are not in town. Uh, you may be familiar with some of these projects. Kennebunk Port has some uh, wells there. They seem to be proliferating through the Silver Coast, as they call this area, um, and they seem to be doing fairly successfully. Um, what is being asked of the town of Arundel is to enter into this agreement, and this agreement would give funding back to the developer to be reinvested into the project. Currently, the parcel of land um, is valued at approximately $712,000 for the portion of the property that is being proposed for TIF development. Um, and in the, at, at full build-out in the future, uh, it would, there's a potential of a $58 million value uh, in the town of Arundel. That's a considerable increase in our uh, municipal valuation. A TIF will shelter uh, some revenues from um, county government budget. It will save us some funds in revenue sharing so that we can get additional funds in the event that revenue sharing continues to be provided to us. And um, it also shelters some funds from the general purpose aid to education, which is the formula that determines how much money the town of Arundel spends um, to educate the children who are here. Uh, th as I said, this will be a seasonal uh, property. Tad, I'm going to ask you to take over if you'd like. I don't know if I've, I've missed any key points or, or any pertinent information. That kind of that was a breeze by. Uh, the development plan wouldn't. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep going as I ask you that. 
Thank you. <laughs> the, what, what the development plan will do for the town of Arundel is the town will still generate the revenues uh, that are collected on those properties. But what we will do is there will be a 75% sheltering of that valuation. Uh, the sheltered portion of that valuation will be split between the developer who will get 67%, um, which is on a valuation basis. There's no money forwarded. There's no money um, that would be provided prior to the town collecting these revenues. And 33% of the additional revenue would go into the economic development um, program for the town of Arundel, which would give us the potential to possibly, uh, in the future, do sewer projects along Route 1, sidewalks along Route 1, um, provide the town with an economic development director. Um, I'm going to have to go into my list here. I apologize. I thought I had it memorized. Uh, um, revol revolving loans for businesses that currently exist or who would like to locate here would provide us the opportunity to provide funds to entice those businesses to come into the town of Arundel. Um, and then 25%, I had said a 75%, shelter. 25% of the proposal on this TIF would go directly into the general fund so that the town can realize some tax relief from this project prior to the fruition of the 25-year plan. Um, at the full 58, if, at full build out the $58 million, um, that would be a $5 million benefit to the town uh, to over the 25 years, but it would be a $250,000 benefit to the town um, at that full build out prior to the TIF expiring. Once the TIF expires, all of those funds will become regular revenues, just like tax revenues that each and every one of you pay. And I thank you very much for doing that. Um, and so I, would, I guess I'll sum it up with, with that, ask anybody if they have any comments. The attorney, Mr. Saucier, hasn't thrown up any flags, so I haven't said anything wrong. <laughs> And uh, so I will entertain questions, the developer will entertain questions, the board will entertain questions, um, and if you have anything to add to that, please do. No, I think you covered it well. I think the only thing that we do want to emphasize is that this tip, um, okay, I'll yell at it to it. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize is this tip, um, uh, does not involve any town funds, does not commit the town to any funds, that uh, any revenues uh, that the uh, developer would uh, realize have to come from the uh, construction of units and the sale of units. So in other words, uh, there has to be valuation created, the developer has to create some of these units and sell them um, for that value to occur. So the town incurs no liability whatsoever or uh, it has no um, commitments in any way, shape, or form, any financial commitments other than the arrangement on valuation that is generated by the development. Okay, with that, does anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Richard Westheim. Um, my question, why 25 units? Yeah, okay. Okay. Why don't you just send your question? I'll repeat it. <laughs> Uh, 25 years was selected because that was what was requested, uh, initially 30 years was request requested by the developer. Um, and in order to realize a certain um, return on their investment and the large amount of infrastructure costs that are associated with the project, in order to be able to move forward, the Board of Selectmen and the developer agreed upon the 25 year period to try to defray some of those upfront costs that are quite astronomical. My name is Diane Robinson. I have a, I have, I have a few questions. Um, I just want to make sure that I understand this. I'm not sure that I'm in support of it, but I need to understand it. The current taxes on that property today will remain with the town, correct? So the current correct. TIF money will only be on additional valuation. Okay, just wanted to make sure that I had that correct. 
That's the, so then that's the increment referenced in tax. Increment financing is that additional amount. Okay. Did you, I know that we have talked about them staying open beyond October. Did that, did we stay with October or are we still going to try to keep it open beyond October? The planning board did not bring that to the, uh, this town meeting. Okay, so. then that makes my other question new. Thank you. Now for the meat of this. When this document was put together, who sat down to do this document? I mean, was it the selectmen and the builder? Was there anybody from the town? Initially, myself, Tad, and the Board of Selectmen worked on the initial documentation, and then the documentation was revised by the town, the attorney representing the town on behalf of this project. So there was a back and forth between the Board of Selectmen and the developer. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what my concern is. Um, after having lived here for 33 years and having seen this property change hands a couple of times, and having sat on the comprehensive plan with the planning board as we put this cottage zoning into place and having seen nothing happen or not much happen since. Um, I have a few concerns about what's in this document because if what I'm reading, if I'm comprehending what I'm reading, it is stating in here that for the first five years we're not going to measure whether or not they're making any progress while we're giving them tax incrementing tax increment funding, is that correct? Uh, actually, no, Diane, that if there is no progress, there is no money that's returned to them. So in, as part of the credit enhancement agreement that is the legal document between the town of Arundel and the developer, as part of the, ta uh, the credit enhancement agreement, we will negotiate the time frame and the terms. But in the event that, let's say, for five years nothing is to occur on the site and that property is still valued at $712,000, there will be no additional, there will be no revenues returned to the developer. Okay. I just want to make sure that I really understand this. So, in this case, the developer gets the tax incremental funding. Um, that part of it, to be quite honest, that part of it was easy for me. But when we got into the development costs and where we expected some of the money to go for the town portion, I'm talking about the town portion. So when I'm reading on page nine, it's talking about sanitary sewer construction, um, sidewalks, we could have a whole lot of discussions about sidewalks at these town meetings, um, business loans and grants, marketing, and municipal staff time. I will have to say that I don't have any issue with investing in soil because I don't think that Route 1 is going to do much development without soil on the point. Sidewalks, I think you will be at this point building sidewalks to nowhere. The revolving business loan and grant program, and while I know that there are a lot of people who, who support the economic development committee and they want this, we're talking about tax money. I am not, as a taxpayer, I am not a bank. And as the taxpayer, as long as 100000 to $1 million of my tax money is going to go into loans and grants, I can't support this. What I can support is I can support an additional ambulance because of the number of cottages they're going to have. I can support a fire truck because we're going to need additional fire protection. I could even support an additional fire staff member. But I think that we'd be hard pressed in getting a lot of people to support, maybe I'm wrong, up to a million dollars to loan it to people. And the reason I'm concerned about that is because you see the state of Maine and the federal government loan money to people all the time. They take the money, they open their business, they close their business, and you've lost your money. I don't know where twenty to eighty thousand dollars on marketing program is going to go. Although I would hope that because we're typically very frugal, that the selectmen and the town manager will monitor this to ensure that it is going to good use. Please. 
the municipal staff time. It says economic development municipal staff time, forty-five to eighty thousand, five thousand dollars per year. Could you please explain? Are we going to hire another staff member? Are we going to use part of this money to pay for a staff member we already have? Ready. Ready. Um, the things that you see in the estimated development costs are just estimates, Diane. Um, those are not hard, fast, and set in stone. That gives us the option to spend funds on those items, but does not require us to do so. Um, so as you, you, you made it very clear, the 100000 to a million dollars may not be acceptable. Um, but the purpose of this is to generate economic development, which will also, in the long run, defray costs of taxation on residential properties. Um, so the, these items aren't set in stone, it just gives us a roadmap of what it is we can do. Um, as you well know, if we do get to a point where we have enough funding in these accounts, if we were to, required to go to bond for any of these projects, it would require a town meeting similar to this where the, the residents would have to approve those allocations of funds. We can't just go ahead and do any of these things on our own. There's a town involvement, and I have heard I haven't been involved in any of the sidewalk discussions in, in, at town meeting, um, and I'll, I'll just leave that at that. Uh, for the economic development municipal staff time, uh, that once again isn't set in stone. That doesn't mean that we would bring on a full-time economic development director. Um, what it could allow us to do is share an economic development director with, with surrounding communities to be able to generate some interest in the town of Arundel, help us with other options on how to market the town to actually bring the businesses in. So we wouldn't necessarily be bringing on another full-time staff person at that forty-five to 85000 a year. That just gives us uh, the ability to negotiate something like that where if Kenny Buck, Kenny Port, another community wanted to share those resources with us, we'd have that ability to do that. And that would be voted on at town hall, at town meeting as well? That would if we were going to allocate those funds, yes. Okay. So, since these, so these are kind of a place mark. Yes. Since there is no place mark for additional services like fire, ambulance, we couldn't allocate any of those funds towards that, could we? No. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the, the issue is that in a state economic development TIF program, the objective is, uh, that the state's trying to achieve, is that programs like the uh, uh, um Cottages, the intent is this is supposed to be a catalyst uh, for development. And the activity and the, uh, the revenues that it brings will be catalysts that help fund the economic development through infrastructure and through programs. Uh, unfortunately, those all the programs that we enumerated in this uh, are in fact eligible activities that you can do with the monies. The captured value, that's the that's the that's the monies that you get between the initial value and the uh, increased value from the development. Uh, unfortunately public services like fire fire trucks, fireplace, even police officers those are not eligible um, uh, activities that under the TIF program, so that's that's eliminated from us. But that's, they're not they're not eligible under this, this TIF, TIF district. Right. But I just want to clarify that under the utility TIF district, the reason that that was allowable is that that increased power supply, those kilo, the additional kilovolts in the line, um, the whitening of the corridor. There's a a need that's generated specifically by that project. And so I know you're aware of the Arundel Utilities District TIF. The reason that that one can be allocated for fire um, and rescue is because it's directly related to the need to service that corridor. Okay. So what about road improvements, that town roads that intersect with this TIF district? Would funds, would you be allowed to use? funds to maintain those roads? Is that one of the allowable expenses? I would not say maintenance, but I would say construction. If you wanted to put a third lane in on Route 1 or turning lanes or, or anything that helps to... Uh, but that's not our road. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why the developer is doing those projects. <laughs> that's being careful. Well, it's still at the same time. No, the, state, the state will uh, allow municipalities to make improvements to the state highways. Uh, if the, uh, if the 
this appellate for the shoulder of that cost. No, I'm talking more about Mountain, Log Cabin, no. any of the roads that intersect with this district. It has to be related directly to the district. And uh, those roads are really not directly related to the district. Um, you can't come there to the uh, But the beauty of it all, the beauty of it all is that what you're doing right now is you're debating what we can do with the money. And that's a discussion all of the town needs to engage in, it's like more engage in. These are, as you say, and it's, good, it's a very good statement, these are placeholders. These are proposed activities that selectmen have considered a number of them, even, even gas, even gas uh, pressure stations to bring gas to the Route 1. Um, a, a, a expensive and far off concept, but still at the same time something that could really uh, be a major generator for economic development in the town. But the, the selectmen had to have something in order to qualify for this. And these are some of the ideas that we've popped up. I, I'm sure in the coming months, if you proceed to uh, approve this project, we're going to have some very spirited debate on what priorities the town feels we should be spending these monies uh, for in the future. And I think that debate will be very helpful to selectmen in prioritizing which uses uh, we're going to use this money for. Okay, so even though we're voting on this particular document, this document can be amended in regards to what the town does with the with its portions of the funds. Only well, we only at a town meeting. So we we the board of selectmen can't amend it willy nilly. Well, I, I realize that. Yes, and I'm going to ask Phil to please verify my next statement. If in the in the development of this project there were serious traffic impacts on any of our corridors or any of our roads that are, are in the vicinity of the project, if we were to go for an amendment to this development to add the improvements that are necessitated, would that be allowable, Phil? Uh, certain improvements are allowed if they're made directly as a result of the development in the district. And when you get to that level of detail, what we normally do is go and talk with DC who has to sign off on this list. Okay. And why this list is at a point where it's like we feel comfortable with it because it's all been sort of uh, brought forth to DC and the DC town of the statute. They qualify to say it's the statute. If you got to that point and you wanted to amend it at a future time meeting, you would take a new list and say, this is what we'd like to do. And we would pass that by DC before we've gotten to the town meeting point so that we know that we'd be eligible. But there are certain, obviously, transit-related uh, improvements that some that qualify. But again, it's a fact-specific issue. But you could you could address that in the future. Okay. Yeah. And and I'm sorry, I had a lot of questions, but I actually did read the whole document. <laughs> you read two of them, didn't you, Diane? Yes, I did. Um, I got the first one done, and I was told it got amended, so I had to read it all over again. Um, in regards to the portion that the builder gets. Do we have any correspondence that goes back and forth with the builder in regards to where the TIF money is invested into? I'm going to ask Mr. Polini or one of their representatives to um, answer that question. Yes, there has been correspondence. Any specific items haven't been addressed. Um, but they, it, it was indicated to me that it will all, the majority of those funds will be spent on improving Route 1 for their turning lanes, for putting in infrastructure, water lines, um, water lines, roads, sewer lines, um, and they've actually already partnered with the Kennebunk, Kennebunk Fort Wells Water District to build a pressure tank station there on the site. And I guess what I'm really getting at is, is kind of like a progress report or kind of a process, you know, so that, you know, if anybody questions the amount of money that was given back to the builder, kind of, where did it, kind of a checks and balances, where did it go? Do you have one response to that, Yeah. Sorry. with Kamoin Associates, uh, representing Joe Paulini in the project. Um, just to respond to that real quickly, and I can answer other questions as well, um, if asked. 
is um, so all of all of the money that would be spent by the developer would be for infrastructure improvements and site improvements. Um, and so in terms of a progress report, the uh, town will be required as part of its application and process with the State Department of Economic and Community Development to submit regular uh, annual updates as to what's happening in the district, both in terms of the development and then also in terms of the taxes and the revenues to be returned. Um, and then again, realize it will also be done in phases. So a lot of the work will be done up front because you have to do certain road improvements and the sewer improvements and work with the ledge and a lot of the stuff that before you even begin any development. And then over time, the site improvements will, will slow down and the building improvements will be going up as the market demands. And if I may, I may just add, I don't know if you've ever built a new house, Diane, but it's similar to the requisition process where we wouldn't just turn the funds over to the developer. We'd need to see documentation of, of where those funds were being ex expended. The DECD expects us from that, that from the town as well as from the developer. Thank you, and yes, I did. <laughs> so yes, I know the process. But that's why I was asking. Yes. Is because I just want to make sure that as we go into this process that everybody understands it. There is some kind of a trail of where the money's going to go, how it gets spent. The townspeople have some kind of say as to where some of it gets spent. And thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for your question. Molly, get ready to do your sample. Okay. Do you have a dog for Yes. <laughs> Just a couple questions. Um, Said 67% to the developer and 33% went toward economic development. Are those standard figures, or are those like negotiable figures? Could you do a 50-50? Could you do a 60-40? How does that How does that work? How did you get to those figures? The way that worked is is 75 percent of the project is being considered for this TIF, and so 50 percent and 50 percent of that 75 percent, since the town is receiving. 25% into the general fund revenues. That's how that proportion breaks out. And so that's why it, that number was arrived at. That That is, if voted upon, that is not a negotiable um, figure, if approved. Okay, so it is a negotiable figure, all the way up until it is approved. Is, that's okay. what was negotiated. Yes. That was a negotiated part, so that's, is that, can we negotiate that piece? Because I, th I, I think, from from my standpoint as a citizen of Arundel, um, we are really pretty much at a crux of um, moving forward. We just did a branding study, um, which said that our town was basically an agricultural town. Um, we were we've been cited for one of the best places to live in the state of Maine. Um, and I just recently read an article um, in the paper the other day that uh, we were in the top 10 of the gro uh, largest or growing cities and towns in the state of Maine. And you know we have a we have a lot we have a lot of potential here in Arundel. Um, and I, I'm just I'm, I'm thinking that maybe we probably should be negotiating those things forward thinking into the future of how we can um, build businesses in our town because businesses in our town is really what's going to help us. It's going to put our people in our town to work. Um, we're going to, we can create revenue by people being drawn to our town by some of these businesses. And I, I just don't, I don't think that we should be really shortchanging ourselves forward thinking. Hey, we should really be looking at this and um, taking care, taking care of our town, and the people in our town. We have we have schools to fund, we have <laughs> budgets that we have to, to fund, and I, I just think forward thinking, how are, how are we gonna do that? 
you know, and, and I, agricultural piece, we should really be honing, if we really are an agricultural town, we should really be honing in on that agricultural piece and be putting our people to work. Mr. Chair, no, I guess point of order, would you like me to recognize before I speak? I've been just talking. Okay. Part of the negotiation process, Melanie, was initially this proposal, this TIF proposal was proposed at 100% valuation for 30 years. Um, and I uh, won't take credit for the, the suggestion, but the suggestion was made that 75% of that revenue only, 75% uh, of that valuation only be considered so that the townspeople can realize an immediate benefit in that additional 25%. So that portion of it has, has been negotiated initially. Um, and once again, if voted upon, if not voted upon tonight, we can, we'll go through this process once again, or the developer will tell us that he's not interested in coming to Arundel. Um, I'm not trying to sway anybody's votes by saying that. I'm just saying that that could be, you know, the fact of the matter. So. Um, through the process, that was what was arrived at, is only only capturing 75% of the additional value of that property. Okay, and then, then my next question is, if we do this this TIF for this developer, which I, I would really love to have these this development come into our town, I think it's really, it, it's a good thing, but how many, how many, is it going to be a temporary employment thing, you know, putting people to work, or is it going to be a long-term thing, is people, you know, are we going to be able to employ people for a long time, forward, forward thinking, are we, are we really going to be doing that, because I think we should be utilizing every single piece of the, the TIF offers us to its fullest ability. Mr. Blaine, do you want to respond to Point of order, should I restate my name each time? No, that's fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, you let me know. So, uh, those were very good questions, just to hit on a few of them. Uh, the employment question was uh, it's projected that there will be 23 uh, direct jobs uh, related to this, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that actually would be a fairly large uh, Arundel business in terms of compared to like how many businesses you have in town and so forth. Um, there'll be uh, indirect jobs as well. Uh, so those will be permanent, uh, the 23 that I mentioned. Um, and they might be under contract, they might be employees, or a common, typically a combination of both, but they would be uh, full-time employment equivalents, essentially, 23 at least. Um, then during the construction phase, there would be a lot of additional jobs as the site got worked on and the construction and so forth. And to the extent possible and feasible, and that labor and contracts are available, which there likely would be, um, we're committed to using local contractors during the development phase. We've already been doing that in terms of this planning phase and using as many local people as we can, uh, which has been very beneficial. Um, and then the only other thing I want to say that addresses that issue is uh, around the revenues and so forth is, so there was really, really a lot of good points about agriculture and other kinds of economic development. This kind of project, besides not cre creating any expenditures for the schools, will allow the revenues to be used for economic development. So if you want to market and start to do the kinds of things that would create agricultural districts or local markets for that or support for that, this money would, could be used for that if that's what the town decided to do. So, thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I just, I, well, Jim's gone. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about the multipliers because there are multipliers that occur because of this development. Right now, this development in that area is empty. Uh, it is an extremely difficult area to develop. In fact, we've shown it to a number of people in the past, and uh, it's a very uh, cost prohibitive site. What this project will do, though, besides developing an area that's so far been extremely costly to develop, it will also bring in a new population of people, a population of people that will spend their money in Arundel, that will help um, support existing businesses in Arundel and help generate new businesses in Arundel to meet their specific needs. These are seasonal residents. They're going to have a little different needs and different demands than um, we have from our, our regular year-round residents. And as we build this kind of population that provides 
opportunities for new kinds of enterprises and new type of businesses in Oregon that we haven't had yet. I couldn't say that better, so I think you're good. Okay, Sam. Uh, my name is Sam Hall. I'm the president of Uptown. Um, I have a clarification and a question. Clarification, I think, is on something that was just said about the, about the market study report that was just done for the Economic Development Committee. In actuality, the, one of the conclusions was is, is that there is very limited potential for additional agricultural development in Iran. That's stated in the report. It was also the conclusion of the Economic Development Committee. My question is, and I'm just curious, and it actually follows up on something that you know, you said, Dan, and you quoted as saying, at least in the paper, and that's the def definition of substantial. The uh, credit enhancement of the agreement, which is the legal document as to how the money is to be shifted back and forth as this progresses, uh, is yet to be negotiated. And during those first five years, I think you said, Todd, that there has to be substantial development. My question to you, to anyone, is how do you define substantial? kind of like defining how high is up. Thank you. Well, that will be part of the negotiation um, process, Sam, in the credit enhancement agreement. There's a, there's a general understanding in the development world of what substantial completion or substantial commencement of a project is. And so we would negotiate specifically um, possible breakpoints, possible uh, minimum requirements that would be required to continue along with the TIF project, with the TIF um, agreement. To follow up then, um, does that say, are you saying that if at some point in the future the town could walk away from this because they could not reach a satisfactory definition of substantial? Or are any of the other terms in the CBA? I suppose that any negotiation process can can go south, but I think both the board of selectmen and the developers have a good faith effort to bargain and, and come to an agreement on on terms acceptable to both parties. Thank you. By the way, I'm a supporter of this. Yes, <laughs> Please spell your name. <laughs> Simone Boissano, and I'm speaking as, uh, as a resident of the town. Uh, I know TIFs are new. We just did the CMP TIF, which is going to be basically helping to support our fire rescue. We've been talking since I've been town clerk about trying to bring in new business and support business in Arundel. And uh, to me, this is, uh, it's like a, a grant or something, and but at the same time, I'm looking at it as a taxpayer. I kind of did my homework as well, and I basically looked up to see what those parcels are currently that we're all put together that are going to be part of this development are basically raising in taxes. In 2014, they, we have built them with all these parcels together, $10,682.15. I don't know about you and me, but my old house generates about 2,500, uh, 2, maybe 2,700. Most houses are probably three to 5,000. So this is looking at maybe two residential, three, four, three, maybe four residential homes at the most as far as what it generates currently. And we are looking at generating millions of dollars of assessed, new assessed value just in the project alone. And we'd be giving them back some. Yes, we would be helping them out for infrastructure. But I'm not looking, I'm looking at what they're going to be built on for the next 50 years after that on millions of dollars and not of assessed value. And not just that, the sandwich shops that are going to pop up. I would love to see a water park on Route 1. Who knows? A miniature golf. I think those are fantastic. And I think if you're bringing in how many seasonal cottages we said? 259. 59, you're talking about how many people in each the one, two bedroom cottages. I don't think anybody's seen sketches of them, but they're really cute. Um, that the, Just the fact of having that on Route 1 is going to, to me, generate, it's going to, the pizza place that we opened up, all of these places are going to gain business from that. So, 
we can sit there and vote it down and say we really need to really need to negotiate this further, and which is going to happen for the details is going to get negotiated further. Or we can finally say, yes, we want business here. Yes, we want to do something positive to finally see Arundel get away from the bedroom community and go towards the business. And I'm, you know, that's my opinion as a resident. Thank you. Anyone else with comment or question? Yes, ma'am. Esther Morris, and we're residents of um, Talbot Woods. And I did speak with uh, Todd the other day about the project. And it's my understanding, based on Google Maps, that the, um, the one piece of the property is about a third of a mile from, as a crow flies, from the Talbot Woods sub subdivision. Um, my question is, and I also understand from uh, Todd that the one piece that's over by Talbot Woods, or closest to Talbot Woods, is where the um, septic system for the 259 homes would be. My real question is more to the developer to understand, since this there is so much ledge and granite there, how is the blasting going to be done? How is it going to be um, monitored? How is the noise going to be kept down? Rick, if, if I'll give you a little background. The lot she's referring to is uh, lot 15, uh, map 15, lot 9. That's the closest lot to Talbot Woods. Uh, we had Google Earth, and it appeared to be approximately a quarter mile from the Talbot Woods subdivision. Um, so that's what she's requesting more information. Uh, Rick Light, and I'm a uh, civil engineer on the site with Light Environmental Design. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure exactly where the parcel is, but let me explain to the site if you've been there. The northern half of the site is a ledge knob. The southern half of the site where the septic system, the wastewater disposal system is proposed, are where the favorable soils are, which is why the site is there. Uh, the system is designed to handle about 39 to 40,000 gallons a day in full build out. But the important part of that has been approved by the town, by the state, DHS, and the DEP. And the system has a pre treatment system, so that essentially the water that comes out of that is essentially already treated. So in terms of that, the system itself, there are all levels of controls and safety measures, monitoring wells will be installed, et cetera, regular monitoring that goes to the DEP and DHS when that is functional. As for the blasting, the project is subject to, we have a local blasting ordinance, the local blasting ordinance and the state rule and federal rules. All blasting will be done in compliance with those rules and also will be reported back to the DEP. There was a condition of approval that we actually exceed the radiuses uh, normally required and we'll be testing the adjacent wells. There are several wells, if the residents are here, uh, behind Fritz's property, including Fritz's property, and one well across the street. We'll be doing before and after testing of those wells. So there's been a bunch of safeguards put in um, to protect during blasting and the charges will be done in compliance with all standards. Anyone else with a comment? Yeah, on the tip. Smart, but. Kane, I'd like to thank Season of Cottage, first of all, for one thing. It's taken us 25 years or better to get water pressure on Route 1. Okay? But my question is the businessman, since I've been told so many times by the planning board, or by the selectmen, we don't have any money for street lights. Is that going to be one of your priorities? To help businesses in town first, so we can at least find our business district? <laughs> it may be one. We haven't got there yet. I've been told. We don't know yet. Well, I just want this to be known. Because <laughs> guess what? Be it's taken 25 years to get water. Is it going to take another 25 years for lights? I mean, this is under economical development. So. Yeah, John. Good evening, John Rell. Uh, seeing you guys a bit. Uh, question, comment, other snide remarks. Um, first off, thank you for changing the name. I read the paper and you were quoted as saying that it was going to be the seasonal cottages at Arundel and Avonport. 
we had just spent $25,000 to identify ourselves as a town, and we were going to add Kennebunk Port to the name because it was going to add prestige. Thanks, thanks for getting rid of that. I mean, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess the other concern is uh, comment would be what happens if these guys run into financial difficulties? Where's the, where's the town going to stand three years, four years, five years from now? We're going to have you know, 25 half finished cottages. What, what, what kind of protections are there? In that scenario, John, we'll be collecting additional tax revenue on 25 partially completed cottages, but that's part of the... <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, but my that, house? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but that's part of the... Um, um, that's going to be part of that credit investment agreement that we discussed earlier, where if, in fact, the developer fails to come through on their project, um, that would be one of the breakpoints that would dissolve that TIF district, unless another developer came to purchase it from that developer and would renegotiate with the town in order to continue that project. I'm really confused. Um, January 30th, 2014, I read an article um, in, in the York County Co-Star um, because that's where I get a lot of my news um, and try to keep up to date with current events that are going on in town. Um, and this particular article, uh, consultants urge Rhonda to play up agricultural tourism for economic growth was the, the headline of the article. Um, and in, in the article, it states that we are an agricultural town. Um, and where I was going with that, not that I don't, do not, I do support this, this particular tip, um, but I was thinking forward thinking is that if you are going to be investing in another tip, we should be honing in on those resources that, um, the uh, the Chesapeake Bay, where we paid them so much money to do this study, we should be actually following and going along with their advice. So I guess I'm really confused because if, if it's conflicting of what's being portrayed in a newspaper, why wasn't there anything said? And why? I mean, why do I have to? Because I was thinking all the way from January until now that we were an agricultural town, and you know, I, I really want to support that, but I, I'm just really confused. I, I don't want to go off topic, but I mean, Melly, I appreciate what you're saying, but that's doesn't give me the development. I, I, I may just say one thing, um, and I think members of the EDC, yeah, members that I see in the EDC, uh, <laughs> probably nod their heads. One of the components also of that particular study. Uh, was that uh, their uh, Rundles, one of our Rundles uh, missed market opportunities was tourism and tourism related industries in the town. And if this isn't right up the alley with what Chesapeake Group uh, recommended, then I don't know what is. Um, as as Slugman said, there'll be opportunities to look at infrastructure that supports agricultural related businesses in the future, but we've got a bird in the hand here. And the best tip is a tip that's got something that's real that's coming, that you know you're gonna get the captured value for it. So let's get this one, and we'll move on to the next one.
yeah. utilized, so there is some limitations on how far we can go. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick clarification something that Todd said. Uh, under the credit enhancement agreement, one thing you're going to be negotiating is that trigger point of the five year, whatever you come up with. And you had said that it would just tip district could dissolve, but that's not technically true. The credit enhancement agreement would dissolve. Yes, I already. The tip district you voted on tonight would just continue, but there wouldn't be any transfer to the developer. We could amend that in the future. Thank you. I just want to clarify that. Thanks, Anyone else? This time. I just want clarification because someone just said a few minutes ago about Kenmont Port and Arundel and the name. But in mine, it calls it Arundel Kenmont Port Cottage Preserve. Arundel Kenmont Port Cottage Preserve. Arundel Kenmont Port Cottage Preserve LLC. This thing has Kenmont Port all over it. So is it Arundel? Is it Kenmont Port? Did they move Kennebunk Court, did you tell me? <laughs> the, the partnership, the LLC is named Kennebunk, uh, Arundel Kennebunk Court. Um, the project is the Arundel Seasonal Cottage. Well, this That's what will be on the sign, correct, Joe? Yes. Thank you. Okay, then you might, because in here, on page one, it says Arundel Kennebunk Court Cottage Preserve. The, the, the nation of the district. That's the name of the limited liability corporation that's been set up. So that's the entity that we're entering into the agreement with, but that's not the name of the project. It, it would just it would, it would be like if we were entering into an agreement with Legos. Uh, that's the name of Legos. We wouldn't call it Legos or, or Rundle or something. I, I guess I'm not competent to use the word Legos, but <laughs> just as an example. Well, this says designation of the district will facilitate the development of the Arundel Kennebunk Port Cottage Preserve Seasonal Resort. On page one, on the number two. Starts with article one, then it says benefits to the district, new tax dollars, and then number two, Arundel Kennebunk Port Cottage Preserve. I'll have Jim clarify that, Jim Demesis. Just to clarify, and um, so through the, uh, the town attorney in the town, can, if they need to change the language, but it will be called, it will not have Kennebunk or Kennebunk Court in the name. It'll be a Rundle Seasonal Cottages. Uh, in terms of the name of the resort and anything that's marketed or anything for signage. Yeah, and I'll just verify that, that the, the uh, findings that you're yeah, voting on. The findings you're voting on tonight include uh, authority for the Board of Selectmen to make those kind of minor corrections like that, typos and those sorts of things, as long as we're not changing the substance. So hearing that tonight, and everyone seems to understand that's not the real name that's in here, that would be fixed and sent uh, and changed and sent to DCD. And if I may, they still need to get a sign from them. <laughs> Great vote, Todd. Make it go fast, Dan, because you're up against the clock here. I'm sorry, somebody else has to go. You people who don't know me, I'm Stanley Kaczynski. Got a question to ask? Clarify, does Dan be corrected? But I thought I read somewhere where these developers will have nothing to do with the permitting process. Have nothing to do with the permitting process? Correct, the cost of it. That is incorrect. That's incorrect. Ms. Prentin, I stand to be correct. Okay. On the 58 million, today's value, totally built value. What are we talking? Totally, totally built value in today's dollar standard. In which year? That is yet to be determined. Okay. Which year that they will reach that break point with that complete build out. If if the units sell forty units a year, it'll come a lot faster than if they're selling ten a year. 
so that that will be determined by the, the marketing and the development and the actual sales. No permitting. No permitting will be taken from the taxpayers, correct? No, there will be no money that the, the uh, town will be, the taxpayers will be spending on that. The permitting, they've already got their permits. They've already spent about $26,000 just in permits to the town already. And then building permits will be issued on an as-needed basis. As what Stan was, I think what Stan wanted to clarify, will, will that break, will that affect our growth management ordinance and the number of permits that are being issued? Is that correct, no. Stan? No. Okay. I don't want to see my tax dollar going for something to get permitted. When, they, when I read this, and my memory is very good, and I'll dig it up, and they said the town of Rundle will have, um, will have to be footing in this. That the developers said that they'd have no part in the permitting process. That's an act. Because anybody can walk away from the project. I just ain't seen my tax dollar tied up, and all of a sudden, I mean, you know, big projects, a lot bigger than this, have gone belly up overnight. Correct? So that 58 million is at which standard now? Which year? When it's completely in at 259 units? Right. Could be in 25 years. Thank you. Was I on the film? Yes. Thank you. Jack Reeds, I have uh, two quick questions. One, uh, I haven't heard much about the projected time frame for this development. I was hoping to hear a little more about that. Yeah, there you go. And secondly, you close it, you need uh, secondly, uh, you know uh, something about the marketing firm. And uh, I guess uh, a little bit about the developer, but I'd like to better understand uh, where the money is coming from behind all of this, uh, and this organization are both making big commitments here, and in effect, uh, who are we jumping in bed with? Uh, my name is Joe Paolini, and I don't know, but I've been coming here for about 10 years, so I've done great over those 10 years. Um, the group is made up of myself and a gentleman by the name of Alan Marks. Alan's been here with me through the course of these 10 years. The other folks are from Connecticut. It's a family called Tagliatella family. They own a lot of properties in New Haven, Connecticut. They basically, right now, they lost their dad. He was a friend of mine, and we developed a relationship. Now his two sons and daughter run their organization. They own a bunch of, uh, close to a thousand apartments in New Haven. And they own Saybrook Inn. If you look that up on the website, you'll see that it's like a four or five star. And they own a marina there. They own a bunch of um, commercial properties. So they're our joint venture partner. And I know that on the Economic Development Commission, there's a, a banker, and this family does banking with that bank. And he, I believe, nodded yes, they're very strong. And they, are, they, don't, they have not done anything to blemish their name, they never will. Uh, they commit to a project, just like I have, for 10 years. <coughs> we will see it through. Yes, we are at the mercy of the economy, just like everybody else. But our market study that we did with RCLCO out of Washington, D.C., states that we could be out of there in seven or eight years. It behooves us to come in, do our job, and get out. Because the longer we stay, the costlier it gets. So if you have any questions regarding the integrity of the family, there's none. They donate a lot of money to charity. I was at one of their functions. People came in from New York, um, from across the states. That's how well respected they are. Um, so I can't promise you what's going to happen tomorrow because nobody can guarantee what's going to happen tomorrow. But I can guarantee you that the group that's doing this work, including myself, I 
are committed to it. And it's going to be one of the most magnificent projects that you will see when it starts and when it gets completed. I can envision it. I've been envisioning it for 10 years. First time it was here, I think it took four or five years for Rick Light and I to get approved for an RV park. But then these folks came along. They're all private funds. Um, there's no banks involved unless we want to go to a bank. We don't have to do it. So that's the good thing about it. If things get soft, we can hold on because we have people with a lot of money behind them. And I wouldn't be here now saying that it's going to happen unless I was certain because this is really for my grandchildren and for my family. So I want it to happen and will happen. So thank you very much. Thank you for all the support. And if you have any other questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. So um, I think we have to turn the public hearing at this point in time since we're right up against our town meeting, which we started about five minutes ago. So I'm going to close the public hearing and everybody stays uh, to uh, take up the business of the town. So thank you all for coming. Everybody, uh, Rundle residents, if you haven't got a card yet, uh, you're not going to be able to vote. So I think they're being distributed over here uh, at the table in the group gym.
That's because this is the town meeting for the town of Arundel. It's about the folks uh, who are residents, uh, but it might be helpful to have non-residents speak. So that would include Todd Shea, town manager, Tad, Tad Redway, town planner, Jen Dumas, parks and recreation director, Bruce Mullen, Arundel Fire Rescue Chief, Officer Troy Chenard, Arundel <coughs> Contract Deputy, Denise Clavet, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Representatives from the Season, Season Cottage Representatives, Joe Paolini, Jim Demikis, and Rick Light, and last but not least, <coughs> Sheriff uh, Maurice Ouellette. Is there a motion to allow these non-residents to speak? Okay, okay motion has been made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by raising your card. All opposed? That motion is passed. So, um, everybody's got their card. The voting procedure, uh, particularly on this one, first one, uh, Article 3. Um, I'm going to ask you to hold your cards up and hold them until I tell you to uh, put them down. Then we'll go to those who are opposed and ask you to hold your hands up. Until I ask you to put them down. Article 3. Shall the town of Arundel designate the Arundel Seasonal Cottages Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District and adopt the development program for the district subject to the findings and the development program attached to the original town meeting warrant as Appendix A, copies of which are available at the office of the town clerk? Is there a seconder to the motion to approve our motion? Mm -hmm. There's a motion and a second. This has been made and seconded to approve Article 3. Discussion on Article 3. Don't be shy. Maybe you've got it all out of your system in the last <laughs> In the public hearing, I, I arrived late, so I missed most of it. So, um, seeing no hands, I'm going to call for a vote on Article 3. All in favor of the passage of Article 3, signify by raising your cards. on the town's website for months now. Um, they have been posted with the official town meeting warrant at town hall um, since the warrant was signed. Um, there are copies available at the desk at the entrance, uh, but that information has avail been available to residents for quite some time now. Further discussion, questions, or comments on Article 5? Is there a possibility of giving a brief summary of what this is? Or is there a. What's the. Miss Donna? <laughs> Um, 
Oh, a brief summary. Okay, well, let's give this a shot. First of all, before I do that, I'm going to quickly just read the names of the uh, members of the committee. Uh, this was a comprehensive plan review committee. We were working with an existing document and making some recommended changes, which is what it is we're voting on. Uh, committee members besides myself, Donovan Hinman, uh, are Dorothy Gregoire, Sean Hayes, Philip Prince, Ray Reimer, Diane Robbins, Tom Dattle, Dan Dubois, John Bell, and Simone Wassena. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what a comprehensive plan is, uh, it's basically a very broad guideline for the town that makes proposals and suggestions for the direction we might go in. Uh, what we are presenting tonight is just that, it's a proposal. Um, it's a result of, uh, as my committee members will attest, hours of discussion, um, some good healthy argument. Um, the committee members were sufficiently married to bring a lot of different points of view, so a lot of things got you know, thrown back and forth and we came to agreement. Uh, we also involved members of the public who were intimately involved with some of the proposals, particularly the landowners uh, in what are described as DB1 and DB2 along Route 1. In a nutshell, what all of this proposal does, the most substantive part of it, um, is to establish five mixed-use districts, three of which really already exist, but under a different name. So the southern portion of Route 1, along the Route 1 corridor itself, uh, is what's going to be called DB1, Downtown Business District 1. And that's going to encourage a, and this is why they're mixed use districts, a mix of business and residential uses, um, and along the Route 1 corridor in particular, the kind of thing that you typically would see in a small town, business on the first floor, perhaps an apartment on the second floor, or a family residence on the second floor. Um, DB2 includes the back land from there, and that's really a new district to some extent, uh, allowing for some larger commercial uses, discouraging more residential uses, but in response to the landowners who showed up and talked to us, uh, still allowing for that. Uh, the third area is the Townhouse Corner District, which is uh, in the area where Wicks is at this point in time which again has always been kind of a mixed use district. We're just giving it its appropriate name and, and suggesting some guidelines for making it uh, possible for that development in that area to make sense to the community. Uh, the, two, the, the fourth one, which is also existing, is currently known as Community Commercial North, which is the eastern end of Route 111. Also, already a mixed use district, but again, we're trying, trying to put some consistent framework around that. And then the fifth one is a new one, which would be a very small one at the northern end of Route 1, which we're calling the Gateway District, because we have the entrance at the southern end of town from Kennebunk, and from the northern end from Biddeford, but it's kind of like, you know, you're in Biddeford and then suddenly you're not, and that means, must mean you're in a um, So the Gateway District would give us more of a, a, a gateway, aptly named, uh, to let people know you, you just left Biddeford and now you're in a better place. <laughs> Um, in addition to that, we have one minor little tweak to something called the uh, Resource Protection Zone, uh, which in the original comprehensive plan labeled an area around Brimstone Pond. And we said, why do that? Um, resource protection might be necessary in some other part of town at some point. So let's loosen that up a little bit so it's not quite so location specific. Uh, if you were to go through the entire document as some people do in town. Um, what you might do is find all of the places where we've had to change the names to keep it consistent. We fix the occasional comma and semicolon, uh, but the substantive changes are the ones that I just described. So if you have any other questions while I'm up here through the moderator, I'll stay here for a moment. Any questions? I just wanted to add, being on the committee, that this is not a land use ordinance amendment. What it is, the, the comprehensive plan is an outline or a, a, like a like a skeleton, basically. And then the, the um, planning board is the one that fills in the details. This is just a very broad um, outline that then the, the land use ordinance has to kind of mix in with this and we were asked to do some changes so the land use ordinance could be amended as well. Any further questions? Thank you. 
questions or comments on Article 5. So you can only call for a vote all in favor of Article 5, signify by raising your cards. All opposed. Article 5 is passed. Uh, how many things we're going to skip over Article 6? Article 7. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $60,588 for the general government account? Is there a motion to approve Article 7? Motion to be immediate seconded on Article 7. Discussion on Article 7. Please. My name is Diane Robbins. Am I one question? Ready, Todd? I'm ready, Diane. Yeah. All right. What's the impact on the mill rate, including the school? The impact on the mill rate, including the school, as proposed, yes. this budget anticipating growth that the town of Arundel has experienced in the last 10 years, so assuming no loss in valuation, there should be no, no impact to very little impact on your mill rate. The RSU budget did increase by approximately 1.17%, so on a $100,000 house, there would be approximately $117,000 increase. I anticipate that the increase in valuation of the town over last year will allow this to be a flat funding budget. Including the school? Including the school, but I can't guarantee you that at this point. I need to add that disclaimer. Thank you. Com comment, further comment on Article 7. Article 7, seeing none, all in favor, signify by raising your cards. All opposed. Seven is passed. Article eight. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of five hundred ninety-seven thousand five hundred seventy-two dollars for the town hall administration account? Motion. Motion is made. Second, to approve Article eight. Discussion on Article eight. None. All in favor of Article eight. All opposed. Article eight is passed. Article nine. Shall the town Vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $244,892 for the Arundel Fire Rescue Account. Is there a motion to approve? <coughs> Motions to remain seconded to approve Article 9. Discussion on Article 9. Don't get too easy on me. All in favor of Article 9, signify by raising your cards. All opposed. Article 9 is passed. Article 10. Shall the town. If I may, yeah. um, before okay, I, I didn't anticipate this, but I wanted to add before we lose interest, I wanted to welcome people to come to the Town of Arundel website, www.arundelmain.org, and on the home page, there's a link to sign up for agendas. Um, if you sign up through the home page, you'll receive a follow up email that lets you confirm that you are, in fact, the one that signed up for that. You get to choose different uh, options, and in those options, you will receive agendas to the meetings you're interested in receiving agendas for. Um, and I want to say that before I lose any more of that. That's a very helpful comment. Thank you. <laughs> Article 10. Shall a town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $61,325 for the miscellaneous services account? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made second to approve Article 10. Discussion on Article 10. All in favor of Article 10? All opposed? Article 10 is passed. Article 11, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 for membership dues to, dues to the Eastern Trail Association? Last year's appropriation was $5,000. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to remain seconded to approve Article 11. Discussion on Article 11? Yeah, what do we get out of it? Is that, you want to identify yourself, Marty? Marty. What do we get out of it? Ted? <laughs> Who's been on the trail? Are you getting anything out of it? Yes. 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 Trail is uh, what, we, what we actually get from it, besides having this beautiful facility in our town. Uh, that provides recreation for our citizens, provides the opportunities for a recreation department to have events, um, also introduces new people into the town for our businesses to take advantage of. Um, we also get a lot of representation and uh, we get a lot of help from the uh, Eastern Trail Management District. And I'll tell you right now, we just, it's, 
it's a good thing we're in there because right now Unitel is wants to renegotiate the co-location agreements all the way up and down. And uh, we are presently doing that and effectively doing that to the, uh, to the benefit of the town. So that's just one thing right there where our membership in this uh, organization not only makes sure that we are covered uh, when we have to deal with people, uh, and I shouldn't say that negatively because you can tell us what's right, but we have to deal with, with utilities, so we don't have to deal with that as a community basis. We get organization, they, they manage all of the, uh, the events that occur on this particular facility. They, they uh, also are the ones who are pushing to increase the size of the trail to complete it to fruition. They apply for the grants, they manage the construction, um, additional sections of the trail farther uh, farther up and down uh, the, uh, the trail border that uh, every single mile that we add to the trail increases the value of the trail for Arundel residents, commuters, those who want to bike to work. Uh, also, it also allows us to start attracting a larger demographic group of cyclists and hikers from down south and tourists that we generally wouldn't have otherwise. Um, that is facilitated by our membership in the Eastern Trail Management District. It also enables us also to apply for grants and follow-up um, maintenance uh, quit, um, both initiatives and funding in the future. So uh, I think it's, it's a pretty good deal. At what point do you find Diane or end up on? At what point do you find Diane? Hold on, the chair's going to recognize Diane. Okay, sir, go ahead. Did that say your name, please? At what point in time are you going to have a place to park by the trail? I believe the selectmen have already dealt with this issue. No one? Can I do it? I just wanted to add that at the meeting of the Board of Selectmen on Monday night, the Eastern Trail Parking Ordinance was amended to allow parking on the westerly side of the Limerick Road in the vicinity of the Eastern Trail. Within the next few weeks, Public Works will begin providing those gravel spaces for people to be allowed to park there. To balance the budget? Did we take any money out of reserves we, to do the budget? Last year or this year? This year, this year we're appropriating $260,000 to balance the budget, quote unquote. Um, over the past, since I've been here, the three years I've been here, we've appropriated $300,000 and last year $310,000. Typically we'll use about $100,000 of those funds that we actually appropriate. Undesignated reserve. Okay, we're on Article 11. Any further questions or comments on Article 11? Vote for vote, all in favor of Article 11. All opposed. All Article 11 is passed. Article 12 shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2,250 for an Eastern Trail maintenance account. Last year's appropriation was $1,500. Through motion to approve Article 12. Which is a main second and to approve Article 12. Discussion on Article 12. <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor of Article 12. All opposed. Article 12 is passed. Article 13. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $662,621 for the roads and garage account? Is there a motion to approve Article 13? Motion is made and second is to approve Article 13. Discussion on Article 13. Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed? Article 13 is passed. Article 14. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $80,950 for the town transfer station slash recycling account? Is there a motion to approve Article 14? Motion to made seconded to approve Article 14. Discussion on Article 14? All in favor of Article 14? All opposed? Article 14 is passed. Article 15, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $79,514 for the general assistance account? 
Last year's appropriation was 78194. The state of Maine reimburses 50% of $10,000 of the portion of budgeted funds spent assisting needy families. Is there a motion to approve Article 15? Motion is made and seconded to approve Article 15. Discussion on Article 15. All in favor of Article 15? All opposed? Article 15 is passed. Article 16, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $209,376 for the recreation account. The fiscal year 2014 was 205602, 2003 was 159775. Recreation program user fees and revenues are projected for fiscal year 2015 to bring in 131825 to general fund. Is there a motion to approve Article 16? Motions made seconded on Article 16. Is there discussion on Article 16? Okay. Just a comment. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Any further discussion on Article 16? Being not all in favor of Article 16. All opposed. Article 16 is passed. Article 17. Shall the voters authorize the Board of Selectmen upon a majority vote of the full Board of Selectmen to exceed by no more than 5% annually the amount authorized for each account approved in Article 7 through 16 above, so long as the amount spent for the total sum of those articles does not exceed the total appropriation approved for those articles. Is there a motion to approve Article 17? Second. Motion is remain seconded to approve Article 17. Questions or comments? Feedback on Article 17. Seeing none, all in favor of Article 17? All opposed? Article 17 is passed. Article 18, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $450,000 for the road construction reserve account? Last year's appropriation was $445,000. 445, the motion to approve Article 18. Motion has been made and seconded to approve Article 18. Discussion on Article 18? Ma'am, please stand and identify yourself. What roads are going to be worked on? I see the public works director sitting out in the crowd there and pulling out a piece of paper. Roger, may I direct that to you? Yes. I'm Roger Tacker. The river road, which is section two, consisting from the railroad to the Grove Bridge. That's the Shimon Overlay, Thompson Road, and the Curtis Road to Timber Ridge Drive. That's a repaint and repaid section of North Skillings Road, which is the Shimon and Overlay, and a section of the Proctor Road. There are other projects in here basically relining or replacing some major culverts. Any further questions on Article 18? All in favor of Article 18, signify by raising your card. All opposed. Article 18 is passed. Now, going forward, I'm not going to read everything in parentheses. I think I can, you can read that for yourself, hopefully, see uh, the prior years. Uh, I'm just going to read the warrant article itself. Article 19, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 50000 for the Public Works Capital Equipment Reserve Account. A motion on Article 19. Motion is made seconded on Article 19. Any further dis any discussion on Article 19? Sir, please stand and identify yourself. Bill Rickland, I'm wondering why uh, the, the huge increase from last year to this year. Why the huge increase from last year to this? It's a needs-based <laughs> increase. Um, what we're trying to do, we have an aging fleet, we take that capital reserves and we um, continue the life, I guess you'd say, we prolong the life of our vehicles. Um, that $50,000 appropriation, last year's appropriation was much lower, but we had to dip into the existing capital reserve in order to make some replacements. Uh, so this year we were trying to cover the expenditures with the revenues so that they match rather than dipping into the reserve, um, which we like to reserve for larger items that will be necessary. Questions and comments on Article 19? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 19? All opposed? Article 19 is passed. Article 20, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the original fire rescue capital equipment reserve account? So motion to approve Article 19. Uh, I'm sorry, Article 20. 
which has been made and seconded to approve Article 20. Is there discussion on Article 20? None. All in favor of Article 20? All opposed? Article 20 is passed. Article 21. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 for the Recreation Department bus reserve account? Is there a motion to approve Article 21? Motions have been made seconded to approve Article 21. Discussion on Article 21? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 21? All opposed? Article 21 is passed. Article 22. Shall the town vote and raise and appropriate the sum of $12,000 towards the operating costs of the Kenny Bunk Free Library? Is there a motion to approve Article 22? Second. Motions have been made seconded to approve Article 22. Is there discussion on Article 22? I have a problem with this article. Uh, there, two years ago, we voted zero dollars for the Kenny Bunk Free Library. We were told that roughly 30 to 35 people in the town of Arundel used the library and the cost was going to be $35 per member for a year. We're now looking at spending $30 for every person who lives in town whether they use the library or not. Accordingly, I would like to make a motion that we reduce this amount to $2,500. Okay, a motion has been made. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to reduce the amount of appropriation to the Game Bunk Free Library from $12,000 to $2,500. That motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion on that motion? Sir, please stand and identify yourself. Yes, my name is Sarah Hall. Um, I, I am We had a vote last year, I believe, that we authorized a, a contribution of twelve thousand dollars for the system. Uh, I also suggest that we may be an error on the number of residents who use the library. Those were the, the numbers provided by the librarian. librarian. Sorry, sir. Uh, I believe the check to the librarian. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes. Um, the discussion we had last year, I think, had overwhelming support of the citizens that a library is a vital and essential part of the character of this town. It's, a, it's a, something that's needed by citizens, by children, by us as a community. If we are going to move forward into the age of what we're bringing our children into, we have to have access to good educational facilities. And I put to you, there was a comment made last year, which I thought was very good. Someone said, uh, I don't use the library, why should I pay for it? Someone stood up, I'm a little too sure to write it out, and said, you know, I don't use a lot of roads in town either. When I drive my car up to four roads, why should I pay for the rest of the roads? I think that was a great comment. This is a community resource that's vital to our town, and I would oppose it. That was going to be my comment, Joe, is that um, I believe if the town appropriates the $2,500 to the library, there will still be a library use charge for library cards at the library. Um, and I also wanted to clarify, it's my understanding that 872 cards have been issued to Arundel residents. I do not. My comment on the numbers came from the librarian last year. Those were the numbers that she presented to us.
second thing, twelve thousand dollars is about, I think, around four dollars per hundred thousand valuation. Thank you. I saw a hand back there. Sir, please stand and identify yourself. I think, as a forward-thinking community, that it's really essential that we support the full amount of funds for the library. We just had a, quite a large discussion about increasing the economic development in our community, and I think we can just look at also the education in our community. And I think it's a small amount of money to uh, support uh, for our community to connect it to our And Thank you. Thank you. I just had one question. Um, after we gave the 12000 towards our operating costs last year, did they continue to charge the user fees to the town of They did not. Okay. No. So with this $12,000, they plan to not charge the citizens again? That is my understanding. Thank you. Okay. So everybody, just to be clear what's happening here, a motion's been made and seconded to amend the article, amending it to reduce the amount of money from 12000 to 2500 any other discussion on the amendment? Otherwise, I'm going to call for a vote on the amendment. All in favor of the motion as amended, signify by raising your cards. All opposed to the motion. The motion's been, motion to amend fails. Now we're going to go back to the, the Warren article as originally written, which calls for the $12,000 appropriation that came up free library. Is there any further discussion on the, on the main motion? Seeing none, I'll ask for vote. All in favor of Article 22. All opposed. Article 22 is passed. Article 23. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $84,500 for, for police protection? Is there, a motion, is there a motion to approve Article 23? Motions with the second and to approve Article 23. Discussion on Article 23. I just had one question. Usually we come and I get to see it tonight. Is there a list of the sort of says stops? Deputy Sheriff and Sheriff will have you. Yes. Thank you. Anything else you wanted to add, Diana? Anybody else have any comments? Actually, this is right. why I, this is why I wanted it. Under, and it shows self-dispatch total. While things are going up, and I'm not saying that I don't want them to do their job, but what I'm saying is that the total, or the majority of this total, are motor vehicle stops. But it doesn't stipulate why. So is there anything that brings it down further than just motor vehicle stops? I was going to answer a different why, so Deputy Chenard, why? <laughs> I know that, I mean, we've, we've focused a concerted effort on reducing the speeds on, on the roads of Arundel. They were, in my opinion, and I'm not law enforcement, they were unacceptable. Um, when Troy started running details, the average he was pulling people over was 15 to 20 miles an hour over the speed limit on our posted on our roads as posted. That has reduced considerably. I think Troy would verify that as well. Um, and if there are any other specifics, Troy, can you break that down any more than speeders and otherwise? Instead of getting up and everybody would want one, as a breakdown of what I responded to or what I definitely has responded to that in the past year. On the back, you can see that the uh, town of Rundle has gone up to 45, almost 4,600 calls last year, which is double from the prior year. Um, and again, as far as traffic stops, and that year, between me and the other companies that cover the town, we stopped uh, 1,344 cars. Okay. I just, I just wanted a little bit of an overview. For the questions or comments on Article 23. Ma'am, please stand and identify yourself. My name is Valen Berry. I live on um, Walmart Road. I'd like to ask the deputy how many people we have stopped. Hold on, you asked through, through me. Oh, 
Yeah. Right, what's your question? He is stopped for not slowing down, putting the school around us. He is on the Black Cabin Road. Deputy, are you able to answer that question? Which is how many are stopped for not slowing down around the, 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 the uh, school zone or along Cabin Road? I, I can't tell you as far as what goes down as far as uh, what roads I stop on. Uh, to be honest, I usually try to hit all the roads from the town, so my traffic stops are throughout the town. There are a lot of cabin on Fulton Road, on Limerick Road. I usually try to hit the high traffic points in the morning to try to get my point across. I try to slow the traffic down. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but I, I do try to hit the uh, high traffic areas and I do try to get around. I've never seen you as far as long cabin, I've been on some calls. Further questions, uh, comments on Article 23? Anybody got their copies? Okay, I'm going to call for a vote on Article 23. All in favor, signify by raising your cards. All opposed? Article 23 is passed. Article 24, shall a town vote to raise appropriate the sum of $2,000 for membership in the Kenny Buck, Kenny Buck Court of Rundle Chamber of Commerce. Motion to made second to approve Article 24. Discussion on Article 24? Passed. Why and what for? Why and what for? Uh, <laughs> it, the, the Kennebunk, Kennebunk Court and Arundel Chamber of Commerce assist businesses in the area. There are business owners here that I know of that are members. Um, the new website has a, a concerted effort to um, increase the visibility of Arundel Towns, provide information as to what the town of Arundel has available to offer to businesses. One such example is this year, and I'm not here to, to pair it for the Chamber of Commerce, Denise Clavette is with us, she's the Executive Director. Um, but one such example, I do sit on the Executive Board of the Chamber as a representative of the Town of Arundel. Dutch Elm Golf Course did join this year, and Dutch Elm Golf Course is actually holding the um, golf tournament for the Chamber. Um, and so that's just one of the benefits that the businesses in the area um, can realize. If, if you have any specific, more specific questions, Diane, I'm going to have to ask that you direct them to Denise because I don't want to be seen as the spokesperson for the chamber. Yeah. I was just curious because I believe we've been in the chamber, but we've never been asked to pay. That's why I was asking, why at this point are we being asked to pay? We, we actually formally received a request this year from the director, so that was brought forward to the budget board and the board of selectmen. Just 
Throw it. Yeah, you throw it. <laughs> Sorry. For the comments on Article 24, questions or comments? Being done. All in favor of Article 24? All opposed? Article 24 is passed. Article 25, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $43,522 in order to provide stipends and hourly compensation for a runless emergency personnel. Is there a motion? Main second and approve Article 25. Discussion on Article 25. Not all in favor of Article 25. All opposed. Article 25 is passed. Article 26. Shell Town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $264,284 for the operation of the Arundel Fire Rescue Per Diem Program. Is there a motion? Motion is made second and to approve Article 26. Discussion on Article 26? Sir, please stand and identify yourself. Those are two completely different services, Jake. Um, the volunteer company is who turns out in the event of a fire. Um, so those personnel who are mostly volunteers who are not hourly employees of the town do the emergency accidents, um, roll the fire gear. The stipend per diems are the staffing, that's the staffing for the 24-7 um, and two in the MT and a, and, a, and, a, and a paramedic to staff the ambulance. So the, the it, this is the way it is every year. Uh, Arundel Fire Rescue per diem program is the ambulance to keep it operating 24-7. Volunteer company is the um, volunteer response for fires. Discussion on Article 26. Ma'am, please stand and identify yourself. Uh, my name is Joan Hall, and I just want to use this opportunity to thank the fire and rescue. We had to use them in our house, and uh, I just wanted to make a commendation for the benefit of having them there. Very good. Anything further on Article 26? All in favor of Article 26? All opposed? Article 26 is passed. Article 27, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 for dues and expenses associated with the functions of the Town of Arundel Economic Development Committee. Is there a motion? No motion. Motion has been made and seconded to approve Article 20, 27. Discussion on Article 27. Since this, is a first, since this is the first time request, would you kind of provide a little bit of is there somebody can provide some background? I most certainly can. Um, this is the first time request because the Economic Development Committee was just formed recently. Um, they've been together for, oh, I'd say a few years now. Um, and now we're getting to the point where they would like to be more involved in state um, economic development associations, um, county associations, to try to make the contacts for the members to be able to go out and reach out for economic uh, opportunity for the town of Arundel. So now that they've moved on to, from, the, not that they've done the formative work whatsoever, they have a lot of policy and bylaws, but this will allow them to uh, network and to connect with other resources that can help the town of Arundel to move forward on our economic development plan. Other questions or comments on Article 27? All the favor of Article 27? Sorry. I can just take this moment. I was about to make a motion that we take Article 32 out of order and then do Articles 29 through 31 and Article 33 to 41 as one vote. Okay. Um, so let me just break that down very quickly here.
motion, if, just to be clear, is to take Article 32 out of order, meaning we're going to talk about it now uh, and, and, and vote on it. But we're going to vote on whether to take it out of order, and that requires a two-thirds vote. Everybody with me? Okay, so the motion is made second is to, to discuss Article 32 right now. All in favor of, of taking it out of order? Okay. All opposed? Okay, so the motion passes to take Article 32 out of order. So we're going to move to Article 32, which is a bigger one than some of the ones we've talked about before. I can see why you wanted to take it out of order. Okay, Article 32, shall the town vote to accept and raise and appropriate the sum of $1,605,821 from estimated revenues to reduce tax commitment as follows. And it's got a long list of items which you have right in front of you, and I'm not going to read all those. Is there a motion to approve Article 32? Motions have made seconded to approve Article 32. Discussion on Article 32. <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to ask for a vote on Article 32. All in favor? All opposed? Article 32 is passed. So that means we're going to go back to Article 28. Article 28 reads, shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen through the Recreation Department to offer new programs not included within this year's budget so long as the receipts from these programs fully cover their costs? Second, third, second. Motions made seconded to approve Article 28. Discussion on Article 28? All in favor of Article 28? All opposed? Article 28 is passed. And Article 29, shall the town vote to authorize the board to select it itself? I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion because Article 29, 30, and 31 all have to do with the same, they're all kind of the same in selectmen and housekeeping plan. Um, what do you do Article 29, 30, and 31 together? Okay. I'm going to actually rule that motion out of the order, and I think I can actually move these articles almost as fast as we've um, just having a discussion on whether we combine them. So Article 29, is there a motion to approve Article 29? Second. Motion was made second in on Article 29. Discussion on Article 29. Seeing so none, all in favor of Article 29. Article 30, shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to accept unconditional donations of funds, real estate, and or equipment on behalf of the town and spend them as they deem appropriate. Motion? Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion on Article 30? All in favor of Article 30? I feel like one of those off um, ads where they give the disclaimer and they start talking real fast. Well, shall the town vote to authorize the Selectmen to transfer available funds such as tree growth? Veterans exemption, excise tax, registration fees, and any other funds which might be used for the reduction of the tax commitments. Your motion. Motion to made second. Any discussion on Article 31? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed. All opposed. Motion is carried. Article 33, we already did Article 32. Shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into multi year contracts, not to exceed five years, for the lease or purchase of goods and services when they need the best financial interest of the town. Is your motion? Second. Mr. Moderator, um, did we vote on Article 30? We made the motion in second, but I don't believe it was voting on it. Yeah. 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 Was that fast? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're still writing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have some first course. We're going to look at the video. <laughs> 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 We're going to go over the list. We'll take five minutes. Two hundred people said we voted. So. Okay. okay, thank you for keeping me. And, uh, so, uh, we're on Article 33. There's been a motion made and seconded to approve Article 33. Uh, is there discussion on Article 33? Sir? Yeah, I asked the question, why five years? Why five years? Uh, that gives the town of Arundel, um, it gives you a bargaining position when entering into contracts. You can usually re receive a favorable price for any type of activities that you're performing, as well as any longer than that, um, you get up to where it's no longer a competitive issue. Um, when the town extends contracts any longer than that, certain things can happen negatively. So five years is typically um, a good, gives us the availability to realize the economy of a long-term contract, but not entering into things that are longer than we nece are necessarily in the best interest of the town. And the other side of that coin is you're locked in for five years with a supplier who may not be accepted. 
Typically, sir, what we do is we do not lock into a five-year contract. What we what this more often than not gives us the opportunity to do is go out to competitive bid, um, and when we have good experience with a company that we're contracting with, it gives us the opportunity to extend that contract an additional year as we move forward. Um, and typically, what I do is survey other communities to make sure that extension of the contract is favorable to the town. Not to exceed five years. It, it does allow us to do that, but in my experience, the most of our lease purchase arrangements that we have required is that you agreements of four or five years at minimum, and those are beneficial to the town. The interest rates are pretty low. I'm sorry. Would you repeat that? Most of the lease purchase arrangements that we've entered into by equipment through a leasing company or a bank have required a four or five year term. That's what most of, most of these contracts we entered into, that's what this article relates to. For the comment on Article 32, or 33. Being on all in favor of Article 33. Oppose Article 33 is passed. Article 34 shall the town vote to transfer the funds received from the sale of tax acquired property to the municipal building reserve fund. Is there a motion? Motion to made, second, and to approve Article 34. Discussion on Article 34. All in favor of Article 34. All opposed. Article 34 is passed. Article 35 shall the town vote to authorize a tax collector to collect partial payments and prepayments of real estate, real and personal property taxes. Is there a motion? Motion made second in Article 35. Discussion under Article 35. All in favor of Article 35. All opposed. Article 35 is passed. Article 36 shall the town vote to authorize the treasurer to collect partial payments of real, real property liens. Motion is made second to approve Article 36. Discussion on 36. All in favor of 36. All opposed. Article 36 is passed. Article 37 shall the town vote to set due, due dates on all property taxes as October 8, 2014, for 30 days after tax bills are made, mailed, whichever is later, and April 8, 2015. Is there a motion? Motion is made second to approve Article 37. Discussion on 37. All in favor of 37? All opposed? Article 37 is passed. Article 38, shall the town vote to charge interest at the rate of 7% per annum on all real and personal property taxes remaining unpaid after the due dates set in Article 37. Is there a motion? Motion is made second to approve third Article 38. Discussion on 38. Please stand and identify yourself. What is it now? What is it now? 7%. Further questions or comments on 38? All in favor of Article 38? All opposed? Article 38 passed. Article 39. Shall the town vote to pay interest at a rate of 3% per annum on overpayments of real, real and personal property taxes assessed as of April 1st, 1st 2014? Motion. Motion is made second and to approve Article 39. Comment on Article 39. Question. I have a question. If I chose to overpay my taxes for several years, you're going to pay me three percent? No, ma'am. And what that means is if you over if there's an error in your tax bill and you overpay that amount, then you would be paid interest on the money that we hold for the period of time that we've held it. Also, if you make a prepayment of your taxes after no, 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 I'm, I'm going <laughs> to keep talking. It doesn't make us a bank. Um, so <laughs> if you make a prepayment of your tax taxes and the tax rate is lower than what you have prepaid, the difference that you made that payment on is, uh, is, it is possible to accrue interest, but in that situation, more often than not, the municipality will return your funds to you. It prevents the town from holding funds that are not due to us for our benefit. I think it's very important because I would never have gotten there based on the 
on taxes. It looks like if I had enough money to pay five years of taxes in advance, you'd be giving me 3%, which is a heck of a lot better than any bank. <laughs> but, but, and let me just clarify, that's not an overpayment, that's a prepayment. So you're prepaying your taxes ahead of time, whereas if it were an over, so if you did that for X amount of years and the mill rate went down considerably, that would be an overpayment of tax. As soon as that was realized, the funds would be returned to you so that we can't hold them for our benefit, at which point we'd owe you 3%. Further questions or comments on article? Thirty-nine. Uh, do we get much, many of these situations? No, I'm I've yet to have one in my municipal government career. <laughs> Any questions or comments? All in favor of Article Thirty-nine? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Article Thirty-nine is passed. Article Forty: Shall the town vote to authorize the board of selectmen on behalf of the town to sell and dispose of any property acquired by the town for non-payment of taxes? Consistent with state statutes and laws, in all cases, the conveyance is to be made by municipal quick claim deed. Is there a motion? Motion is made and seconded to approve Article 40. Questions and comments on Article 40? All in favor of Article 40? All opposed? Article 40 is passed. Last but not least, it's the longest one of all. Shall the town vote to accept and spend as deemed by the Board of Selectmen to be in the best interest of the town, any and all grant money supported by the town of Arundel by the United States government and or the state of Maine under the Community Development Block Grant Program, the Land and Water Conservation Grant Program, or any other similar grant programs in the upcoming fiscal year? So motion to approve Article 41. Motion has been made and seconded to approve Article 41. Discussion on Article 41. All in favor of Article 41? All opposed? Article 41 is passed. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Yes. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Great meeting.